Hi everyone, welcome back to 3D Drawing for Model Railways. In the last episode, we got started learning how to do basic drawings to create a very, very basic uh, relay cabinet. In today's episode, we're looking to take that a little stage further, adding some more details and, and using a few more tools. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go and open up the relay cabinet file that we were working on last lesson. Okay, and as you can see, we're going back to this very, very basic. What we're looking to do today is use a bit more detail and some of the tools up here in the create and uh, sketch work environment. So first thing we're going to look at is using the center position rectangle. Um, so what we're going to start with is adding another drawing, another sketch. We're going to rotate the rear cabinet to the bottom, create a sketch. And we're going to use the the face of the base of the relay cabinet to draw on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to create is, as I say, we're going to use a center point rectangle. Now, what that does is it allows you to place a rectangle that will be derived from the center position that you define. Um, now, what we're going to use is the center of this face. So, to find out where the center is, what we're going to do is we're going to run the cursor along the, the front edge, and you can see it's like a little blue X. When we get to the centre, that X is going to be positioned with a little triangle. That's telling you that's now in line with the midpoint. If I drag down, you can see I've got a little blue dashed line. So that's going to remember that. Now if I come to the side face, I'm going to do the same, drag down. I'm going to get the same midpoint. I'm going to come across. And then when I get to the midpoint of the object, it's going to create the two blue lines in both directions. I then can then place my centre point and drag out my rectangle to be slightly bigger than the object I want. And obviously, as we say, we'll re relay cabinets, they don't just sit on the floor, they're normally buried within some sort of concrete um, base. So we're going to create a footprint. Uh, the, the relay cabinet we, we originally drew, we can see is three millimeters by eight millimeters. So we're going to create that about a millimeter bigger than um, in all directions. So we're going to want five millimeters on that edge and then along the long edge we're going to want to change that to 10 millimeters and then when we click again that places it in that position you can see that it's fully defined um, and is closed because it's turned blue we now need to define so that it knows exactly whereabouts it is positioned um, so we're going to do the sketch dimensions again go from the center point to the edge define that as 1.5 millimeters and from the center point to that edge is four millimeters we can then select the whole base you'll click both the inner part holding shift down pressing the outer part right click extrude again and then we can drag that box down to create a plinth for it to sit on. So we're going to drag that down, maybe say 1.5 millimeters. So it's now got a little base it's sitting on. And you can obviously you can define that that base to be as thick as you want, and the dimensions around it to be the same size if if you want to as well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at. Is creating a bit more detail to the top edge. Now, if you look at most relay cabinets, they generally don't have a flat surface on the top because obviously water would then pool on it. So they either have a pointed upwards or a slant backwards. So we're going to create one that's slanted backwards. So we're going to use create sketch again and we're going to sketch on the side plane or side face. And now we're going to use the line tool. Now the line basically just allows you to draw straight lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the line in the top corner, clicking on it, and we're going to drag it down across the model. Now you can see we've got two ways of defining this now. We've either got a length in millimetres, and if, you can see it's snapping to that edge, so it will always change the, the length to stay on that edge. Or we've got a the ability to define it using um, an angle. So I'm going to define this using an angle. And I'm going to say that I want that to be angled at 15 degrees. 
Again, I want it to snap to that back edge. I'm going to drag it down across till I get that little blue X snap on it. Click. And now I've got this line that now separates, if I press escape, separates the, the side or the face into two parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this top part. So similar to what we were doing earlier with the extrusion, I'm going to right click, extrude. And then if we rotate it around, what I'm, I'm going to do is just drag that arrow across. And you can see that it's now, instead of adding material, it's cutting material away. You can see the operation on the right hand side, and the, the drop down is down as a cut. So I'm going to drag that all the way across to the far edge. Now I can define that just as a distance using eight millimeters. And then that will then give us the angle that we wanted on the top edge. Okay. We're also going to put a little overhang on each side as if there's a top plate, just so the rain doesn't drop down into the, the cabinet itself. So we're going to use the same tools again, create sketch on the top surface. And we're going to use that center point rectangle Finding the midpoints again, using the, the edge to find little triangles. Across the top edge to find that one. Dragging down. I'm going to drag out. Now, again, we know that it's 8 millimeters. this one by 3.16. So, we're going to define the top one to be 8.2 millimeters. 8.2 millimeters. So, it's slightly longer in each direction. And we're going to add... Uh, 0.2 to the current distance. So it's 3.1. We're going to change that to 3.3 millimeters. Okay, and now it needs to be defined because it's at the moment it's not picking up the center point um, as a defined reference. So we're going to define from the front edge to the edge of our drawing as 0.1. And from the back edge to the edge of our drawing, as, which is automatic. That error is telling you that it's already predefined. So now it's going to want to do the side edges. They've come up as 0.1 already, which is good. And you can see the other side's automatically gone to a black line as well. So that's now defined. So we're going to select both elements of that sketch so that we can extrude that. Rotate it around so we can see. And we're going to extrude that up uh, by 0, 0 0.2 millimeters. Okay. So now we've got a little bit more detail into um, the drawing that we've added. We're now going to add a lock that goes across, or a handle that goes across the, the two doors here. So again, we're going to create a sketch. We're going to use the front face of the door to sketch on. And we're going to go back to using two point rectangle it's going to put a little handle we're going to say that it's 0 0.3 millimeters high and we're going to go 0. Point, a little bit short go 0 0.8 millimeters long okay. we're going to define its position from the edge of the inside of the door as 0 0.4 millimeters and from the top edge to the top of the door we'll go for three millimeters Okay, and then we'll do the same, and then we'll extr same thing again. We're going to extrude that out, and we're going to come out by 0 0.2 millimeters. Do the same on the other door, and rectangle, two point rectangle, and we went 0 0.3 millimeters high and 0 0.8 millimeters long. We defined top edge to top edge is three millimeters and from side edge to edge of the door is 0.4 millimeters and now we're going to extrude that again so right click on the inside okay now i'm going to show you another little cheat rather than just defining the height which i could just type in there 0.2 again if i click on the face of the other one we'll automatically define its height to the same height as that edge. Save that. Now we've got a little bit more detail. On the next episode, I'm going to show you a little bit about how we can use the history down the bottom here to make some changes. We're going to change it from the slanted roof into a pitched roof. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Please hit the like and subscribe button and comment below if you've got any questions. Thank you.